Hi everybody. Hi. It's T here. Um, thank you to all of you who sent through your uh, modules on goal setting, your assignments on goal setting. So I read through them all and hopefully you've had feedback from them. And now I just really wanted to use this opportunity. I know we did some live sessions and a number of you came on the live webinars, which was great. We had some really good discussions, but I wanted to use this opportunity really just to go over some of the recurring kind of themes that were coming up when you all sent your goal setting stuff in. So let's talk about those, okay? Um, I found that most of you were particularly clear, you were pretty clear on your longer term goals about what it is you wanted to achieve. And you know, this could apply either for yourself personally or it can apply for your, your organization, either your commercial organization or your NGO. So you seem pretty clear about what the longer term kind of aim is really, more of an aim than a goal, but what your longer term goal is. And a number of you were very good at breaking those down. Um, now, and of course, we're now sort of late into 2017, so your shorter term goals will now apply to 2018, and I got some of those as well. Where I think there's a, still an element of uh, improvement that's needed, I think, um, if I was going to be a little bit critical, I would say that we need to put more numbers on these goals. Uh, you're clear about the goals, about what you want, but a lot of them are not measurable uh, because they're not quantifiable in the sense that they don't have a number attached to them. And I do, 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 I keep stressing this, I think it's really, really important that you get your head around the numbers at all times because if you don't, as your goal goes through the year, it gets tighter and tighter and you don't want any surprises when it comes to financial goals, okay? So let's, to, let's take a look at a number of these things. So the first thing I would say is most of the assignments that came in were lacking numbers, okay? Most of the assignments that came back to me were lacking uh, tangible numbers that you could measure your goal against. So I would suggest to you that you put numbers. Let me give you an example. So if you said we want to recruit a new team by 2020, okay, by 2021 new team or whenever it's going to be, how many people do you need to recruit? On what kind of operational gearing? Do you understand what operational gearing is in your business? You know, for how many staff, um, how much revenue or how much funding do you need to cover one post? You know, what's your break even point to cover that one post? Always, always be aware of your costs because what you don't want is a situation where your revenue or funding is increasing, but so are your costs. And actually your costs are increasing more, excuse me, than the funding or the revenue that you're getting in. So be aware of this because we get a little bit heady when we start getting some funds come through and then we need the resource because we're doing more work and we're getting busier. And there's always this tendency for the team to say, oh, we're so busy, we need some extra people. We need more people. And people can be one of your biggest expenses within your organization, probably the biggest expense in most companies or NGOs. The biggest expense is your staff, okay? So just be mindful of that, okay? When you're setting goals, set some numbers around those goals so that you can measure them, yeah? If you've got a goal to um, acquire a hundred thousand pounds worth, let's put it in pounds because that's what I know, but a hundred thousand dollars then, let's say, of revenue, in two years. Right, we'll start breaking that down. This is what I call reverse engineering, okay? You've probably heard this before, so reverse engineer your goal. So set your higher goal, set the time scale for that higher goal, and then start to reverse engineer it back, okay? So strip it backwards. When do you have to reach 50,000 by? Is it halfway? Or is it earlier? Do you need that particular funding for something, particular project that you're doing that you need the money for, okay? So set your your, your long-term um, objective, your long-term goal, make it very, very specific. We talked about SMART goals, so you know what these are. Make it specific, make it measurable by putting some numbers or some kind of way of quantifying it, okay? And then reverse engineer your goal back to the starting position of when you are going to start, all right? Because what you don't want to do is if you need to, you know, you've identified there's $50,000 worth of project costs that you need to get uh, and 
you need to have it in place by November, then reverse engineering that back, you know that you need a certain amount of money every month. And if you miss it that month, it's only going to accumulate and you're going to have twice as much to get the next month and three times as much and on it goes. And it actually just compounds. The longer that you don't measure things and the longer, the, the less you break things down and quantify them, the more they're going to build up, okay? They're going to build up and then you're going to get a surprise and you're going to create yourself or create for yourself an enormous amount of pressure, excuse me. So don't do that, guys, okay? Do not do that. Set yourselves the longer goal and break it down into smaller bite-sized chunks that you and your team feel that you can achieve, okay? And if you've then... Um, taken reverse engineered your goal into smaller goals that you're starting with now then fifty thousand dollars won't seem a huge amount of money for example if you need to get to fifty thousand dollars revenue in two years if you break it down on a monthly and weekly basis so that you know what you need to start with and actually you may be surprised you may even be able to sort of supersede that and, and go on and set yourself a higher goal. So that was the recurring thing that came across, that you won't put enough numbers in, guys. So I want to see you do some more numbers around some of your longer term goals. And if you are struggling to set yourself monthly ones, um, certainly, without a doubt, I want you to set financial goals. And there were a few that actually didn't put financial goals in. You will struggle enormously if you don't have financial goals in your organisation and also for yourself personally. You really, really, really need to understand your costs and your budget and work your revenue into that. And it's not enough just to cover the basics. Yes, you want to make surplus, okay? You need surplus, reserves, profit, whatever you want to call it. And again, we had that conversation in the live Q&A about what do we do about profits? We're not supposed to be making profit if we're an NGO or a charity. Actually, it's what you do with the money at the end. If you um, reinvest it back into the business or you use it to um, earmark it for some particular project and you've allocated that money to a particular project, then that's fine. That's absolutely fine. You know, If you're sitting there with huge amounts of money in your bank, you may struggle to get additional funding. Uh, but that would be a luxury we'd all love to have, wouldn't it? So um, this is always the issue with our goals and always comes up every day of the year about funding and grants and those kinds of things. So please, set your longer term goals, not too far in the future, <clears throat> excuse me, because your team will find that a little bit demoralising because it just seems too far and a greater reach. So set your goals, give yourself a longer term goal, give yourself a time scale, reverse engineer it, break it down into smaller chunks and then communicate that with your entire team so that everybody, everybody's on the same page and you all know what you're working to achieve. Now, once you've set those quantifiable goals and you've broken it down into measurable kind of numbers so that you can work to those every month, yes, and obviously there are some operational ones as well, I get it, but you still need to put these numbers down. And once you've communicated it to your team, please, please, please make sure you measure and evaluate on a regular basis. Do not leave it and then six months into the year think, oh my God, we're so far away from um, achieving our goal because we haven't been measuring it. And it's a surprise then that you've gone off drift. You've just drifted off and you're nowhere near your goal. So please, 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 once you've set your goals and you've put quantifiable and you put numbers in that you can measure and you've got all those down and you've broken them down into smaller bite-sized chunks that you can actually measure on a weekly and monthly basis, please take the time to review and evaluate. I keep saying this, the magic is in the space between the doing. And this is when you're sitting down, I think for those of you that were with me at Maddingley Hall, this is this plateau piece, this is this flat part of your step before you climb up again. You need this flat part of your growth. You need the flat part of your step up. Is this a very important piece? Because you need to sit there while your company is and your organization is resting a little bit and moving along, may, may not be growing yet, to get yourself equipped and prepared with the right tools, the right people, and you've measured and evaluated what you're doing so far, how it's going, how successful you are, whether you're on target, and what you need for the next step up, yeah? And we can talk about that again if anybody wants to talk about the stepped approach to success, which I can go through anytime. So, 
We've talked about this. And the other thing I want to talk about is SWOT. Now, we talked a little bit about it in the Q&A, your SWOT analysis. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Well, they're very aligned with goal setting and planning. Because let's talk about these things very, very quickly. SWOT analysis. Now, I used to sort of not really like SWOT analysis. I used to think, oh, it's a bit hackneyed. It's a bit 80s. But actually... Um, it's actually a very good discipline to do on a regular basis and it does keep you on track. So, what are your strengths? What are the strengths of your team? Actually, do you really know what your team can do? There may be an individual in your team who's really red hot at social media, you just don't know it. There may be somebody who's really good or really connected in a certain way. So, always make sure you understand what the strengths are of your team, what the strengths are of your organisation and constantly discuss these on a monthly meeting that you have. So when you get together, make sure you're up to date knowing what your strengths are and celebrate those strengths. Now, then look at your weaknesses. It's, I believe it's a strength to know your weaknesses. You need to decide once you identify your weaknesses as a, your weakness as a team, what's missing in your team? What's missing? Once you've identified all the strengths of your team, then you identified the weaknesses. So ask everybody what they believe their weakness is. Do you need it? Do you need that particular element? Or does somebody else in the team have that as a strength and they can cover that? Because I believe that people don't have to be great at everything. They just have to be really good at the things they're good at. Yeah, if that makes sense. Focus on strengths. Always focus on strengths. Understand what the weaknesses are in your team and as an, as an individual in your team and also for yourself, understand what your weaknesses are and then ask yourself, do I need to learn about this and get better at it or actually can I delegate this to somebody else who could be far better at it? Do I really need to know this or can I give it to somebody else and focus on my strengths? Yeah, so that's a really good exercise for you to do on a regular basis and then opportunities. So if you give this out to your team and they know that every month they've got to come to you with any idea of any opportunities that might be coming up, then they're sniffing for that all through the month. They're looking out for it. They're listening to interesting conversations. They're looking at market trends. They're looking at what's happening in, the, in, your, in your community, in your area. And they're bringing that information back to you at your monthly meeting. So what are the opportunities? Because you can't be everywhere and you need your team to be looking at those as well. And you could come up with an enormous amount of opportunities. Look at what's happening government policy. Is there an opportunity there? Is there an opportunity if there's some kind of event going on for you to speak or for you to sponsor or for you to have a name there? What are your opportunities? Don't leave these things to measure on an annual basis. Do it every month. Do it every month. Or you'll miss it. You'll miss the opportunities that are there because they're right in your face but you're not looking at them. Okay? And the last one is threats. You must be aware of your threats. We were talking on the Q&A. One of the girls was telling us that um, you know they may cut or their project, they may cut the transport. The, the actual government may ch actually change the transport situation in a year. They might cut it. At the moment, people are getting free transport to the venues of the courses they provide, of the programmes, sports programmes. Um, now, if the government are going to cut that in a year, don't wait for them to do that. If you're aware that that could be a possibility, then you can put a plan B in place and you can set yourself a goal or an intention that within the next six months, you're going to be investigating transport situation, costs, whether you have to add those as a cost to your course material or to your clients. Yeah, so nothing is a surprise because you've anticipated that as a potential threat. Okay, so those are the things I really want to talk about today because, you know, hopefully that's given you a little bit of advice and support. Well done to all of you. You did submit some great work. I mean, it was very interesting to read your goals. You've got some really good ambitious goals and a lot of you are very organizing, putting them together in a matrix and a grid. So it, it was very good to read. I really, really enjoyed reading them. But as I said, again, focus on the numbers. Keep focusing on the numbers in all things. Know your numbers, know your costs, set your goals, measure them regularly and evaluate. Communicate all of these to the team so everyone is working to the same goal. They know what they're working for. And do your SWOT analysis on a regular basis so that there's no surprises. Then nothing smacks you in the face that you weren't aware of. Okay, hopefully that's helpful. Well done to all of you this year. You've done an amazing job and I'll speak to you soon. All right, you take care. Bye. Bye.